So am I the only one who thinks that this looks vaguely sexual? Hello everybody, welcome back to Regrowth. Between episodes, I decided that a good little project I could do was... Nope, wrong chest. Filling out the seasonal runes of Batania. These things are pretty simple. They're just a combination of two elemental runes and usually some pretty cheap ingredients. You've seen me do rune crafting before, so none of it was expensive, and like hell am I doing another montage. The hardest of these was the Rune of Winter, which requires a cake. This cake, of course, I needed milk, and for milk I needed cows. Now, I can make cow eggs on the runic altar again, but to make that I needed leather. And the easiest way I know to make to make leather, I could go hunting imps in the nether, but never again. The easiest way to make leather is to take this alchemy catalyst and use it for mana infusion. Now, let me explain what that means, because I've seen a couple people in the comments who have never played modded Minecraft before. These mana pools are kind of multi-use. Just on their own, I'll, I'll show you in a little example of how these things change. If I bone meal some grass and then use my shears to get some of it, Just on its own, the mana pool will turn them into pasture seeds, which we can use to spread grass to regular dirt tiles. But if we put this alchemy catalyst on the block underneath the mana pool, you see how it kind of transforms the base of the mana pool? Well, now it's a transmutative pool, and you see that it turns this grass into a piece of shrubbery. And that can turn to a dead one, and that can turn back to grass, and you can use them for decoration. And that's just one type of what this thing does. The thing that I used it for, of course, was throwing in rotten flesh and turning it into leather. Which, without this, without the alchemy catalyst... The pool is just incapable of doing. There is another thing that goes underneath the pool that can be used to duplicate some items. But that will come later. So, with my leather I made the cows, I made the cake, I made the runes, and that is all done. Other than that, the only real major changes I made were I set up a little work area over on this plateau where I can start working on witchery and magic in general. It's kind of opposite the base from the magic, so, or from the technology, so we have a good separation of magisteria. This is just a chest, a void chest to dispose of things. And a crafting bench. I also expanded the types of trees that I'm growing. More specifically, I have these spruce trees here, and you can see they are, they are freaking huge. And I built myself a lumber axe. And what this does is cuts down the whole thing at once. I did this for two reasons. Oh yes, and, and to grow a large spruce tree, all you do is you plant the saplings in a two-by-two two pattern like that. I did this for two reasons. The first is, I am going to need lots of wood and saplings and stuff like that for witchery. The second is, the bloomery furnace, which we are working our way towards as the first step in steel production, early steel production anyway, requires specifically charcoal. It cannot accept coal. So I have been gradually burning this wood all up in my little wall o ferni here. And at some point I should probably hook these up to some pipes, but I might wait till I have mechanism pipes, because those are easier to manage than build craft ones for purposes like this. I might as well put that wood away. So 
today, our goal, at least one of our goals, is to get the things we need for redstone seeds. And for that, we need this whiff of magic from witchery. Zombie. I cleared that cave. I cleared that cave. You're not in this cave. We have ghost zombies. Spooky. Oh yes, another thing is I made myself some equipment. I have here a ring of magnetization, which is my favorite magnet. It is a little bit basic, but it has so many uses that I might show off to you sometime. It just draws in items from far away. And I made myself a sojourner's sash. This makes me move a little bit faster. I'm I'm just walking and I'm moving at sprinting speed. If I sprint, I do this. <laughs> Gotta go fast. It also gives me high steps, so when I have these little one block differences, I just go up them like they were stairs. Neat. Sleep through the night. I do, in fact, have a way to turn mob spawns off if I really, really wanted to. And I could work through the nights. Over in my... Ah, I actually have it in my pack. This vial of vanity's emptiness gives me a buff that will basically turn off mob spawning. The problem is it lasts only six minutes and nights are ten minutes, so you need two swigs per night, and they are pretty expensive to craft. So, let's get witchery started by building our witch's oven. This is kind of the first step. It's very simple. It's just a bunch of iron. Also, I made these clay jars that go with it. Now... I am not a witchery expert. This is the only pack I've ever played that has it in it, and I've never gotten very far in witchery. So I only know the basics, and I need some fuel for that. And we'll be kind of learning this together. Joy of joys, I know. Get a nice stack of charcoal. But I do know that what this thing does is it acts just like a furnace, but it has a chance on every smelt to put things in these clay jars to catch the fumes that the smelting gives off. And those are useful for a wide variety of things. I already have rowan saplings. I'm going to take these alder saplings. Okay. These special witchery trees you can only acquire through Mutandus, and I've only been lucky enough to get Rowans so far. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going... No, well, that didn't need to be cut down. Derp. I'm going to plant these, and I'm going to go and find my Rowan sap. That's why I had the lumber axe out, so I could cut down another tree to put down the Rowan, but I don't have the Rowan. <laughs> This is what goes on in my head constantly. Rowan. It must be in the witchery chest. Which is still in need of being moved over to the new witchery area. Which I shall just do. I'm trying to make less cuts on doing procedures because that that will probably like you'll lose the occasional bit of shenanigans if i just cut the video every time i'm not doing anything particularly impressive also that way lies montages we are not doing more montages Sadly, this pack does not have fast leaf decay, so we just kind of have to 
put up with this and either let it happen or speed it along. Now, these rowans and alders and all of that, these have magical properties and they're useful for a bunch of things. Right now, the thing we looking, we're looking at in particular is these whiffs of magic require us to burn rowan saplings in the witch's oven. And that will give us a chance. It is not a guarantee, but it will give us a chance of a whiff of magic that we need for redstone. Yeah, that's interesting. You can also get it from a distillery. So, while all these trees are growing, let's look at the other quests we can do. Ah, these fume funnels will increase the chance of us getting a fume, so that's probably a good first step. How are these things built? And that's filtered. Regular. It's just some buckets. It's a bunch of iron, really. Let's cycle our iron and get going. Convenient thing about having a magnet on is I can kind of just run through the field harvesting. I don't need to particularly try to find all the little bits of essence. I could probably make myself a scythe or something and use that for mass harvesting. That's an idea. It's a better weapon than the sword, anyway. Okay, let's put this away in miscellany. And let's just take the iron that we do have. And let's see, if I remember correctly, we needed two iron blocks. Uh, four buckets, and well, actually five buckets. Because one of them's a lava. And I'll just have that set up so I only have one bucket to spare. I had extra buckets on because I got a bunch of milk to make the cake. So it, this is a convenient way of getting rid of these buckets, I think. Derp, derp. And I need a little bit of glowstone. The four buckets, and what was the last thing? Iron bars. <laughs> I know I have them. There we go. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I usually just cut out, but eh, might as well. Behind the scenes, if you will. These work you by uh, just being right next to the witch's oven. You see them connecting. I believe you can have up to two of them, and they can also be filtered to further increase the chances, and those filters are actually relatively expensive, if I do remember. Yeah, filtered fume funnel is just that plus a fume fill. And that requires a charged attuned stone, which we won't be able to get until we set up a magic circle, which we won't get until we set up an altar, which... I know we don't have to quest for it yet, but let's see what we need. We need these rowan woods, we need some fumes. It's nothing too terribly difficult, actually. We just need to get those magical trees growing. And also, I need to get the third type of it, the Hawthorne, I do believe. So I need to make myself some more Mutandis. Let's see, with 14 Mandrake Roots, I can make seven crafts of Mutandis, because it requires two per. Downstairs in the old bunker, I am growing some utility crops, including cacti. And I remember that it needs cactus green. Mm -hmm. And I believe I have some extra inorganic stuff. Now, what else did I need? I need regular bone meal and I need wood ash. 
wood ash, I believe I can get by smelting saplings in the witch's oven, or just by smelting them regularly. In fact, it looks like, yeah, only by smelting them regularly. Interesting. Okay. Well, I already have a bunch of sapling, or a bunch of fir trees that are huge out there already, so I can just burn all the saplings that I have. Very convenient. <laughs> oh yes, I've been experimenting and rejiggering with these pouring taps. Not because I particularly need tons of seared bricks, but just because I'd like to try and figure them out. So far I haven't really stumbled upon anything definitely. Hmm. Let's keep our cold coke right there. And I should have... Oh no, that, that's right. I was using the build craft pipes to drain out of this thing. So let me make a tank. Well, a tank wouldn't hold very much creosote. Maybe I should just make a couple of tanks and then put a void pipe on it, because I'm not going to need much creosote. It's Mr. Creosote! Dun 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 thin mint. Ah, my lumber axe has finished repairing itself, so let me put it away in its little baggie. Oh yes, I also made myself a void bag. This is just a portable trash can. Boop. Very neat. So with this amount of wood ash, I can only eight. I can only make eight mutandus, but that's good because I only have the dye and mandrakes to make seven. Huzzah! Oops. Oh, and I I actually wanted that bone meal anyway. Well, these things are already out. Okay, let's do the Hawthorne Shuffle. Nope. Nope. I actually liked those, and I didn't get a sapling from the last one. Hooray! <sighs> Boo. Hawthorne! There are also other plants we want. Like, remember that Spanish moss? That was a fail. Tulip. No, no. What? What? I guess I needed water next to it. Why not? Hawthorne. Mushroom. No, no. You're all wrong. <sighs> Being very careful not to trash my hawthorn or the cool sapling that I wanted. Okay, I should have some spots to plunk this down. I'll just put it right here. Yeah, this little corner of the base is just kind of the space for little passive things. Trees that grow, and and noisy things like the chickens and the cows. Just, just things that I want out of the way. That I only need to access very occasionally. 
And screw waiting around for the trees. I am just going to get a bunch of bone meal. It's not like it's limited anymore. I need to get my head in the game about this being magic crops. Lovely. Now, you do have to be a tiny bit careful when you cut these down, because every time you cut down a p every time you cut down a witchery tree, the chance of an ent appearing increases. And to my knowledge, there's nothing you can do to control it. You just have to confront the ents. And eventually we are actually going to want them because they drop some pretty cool things, but they're also really tough. Okay. I don't see any Ents around. They haven't marched on Isengard. Alternately, 420 joke. Substitute where appropriate. Alder. Where did I plant the alder? There we go. Well, you know what I mean. Trees. Okay, so. Getting tons of rowan saplings. So very lovely. Very, very lovely. I guess while these, le while these leaves are doing their thing, I can talk you through the things I like about the Botania Magnet. It's a little bit basic than some magnets you might see in other mod packs, like the Draconic Evolution Magnet, which picks up items before they can even render, and also picks up XP orbs, and can suck items through walls, which I actually kind of dislike. But the Botania Man Magnet has a couple of nice features that synchronize well with Batania. First of all, when you just throw something out of your pack, it will take a couple of seconds before it registers again. This is so that you can throw items into mana pools without having to fight your magnet, which I can tell you from Project Ozone is very frustrating with the Draconic Amulet. Also, this magnet works with something called a Solignolia. The Solignolia, which is a relatively simple flower, the only thing we have, uh, the only thing we don't have yet is a little tiny bit of redstone. Ooh, rowan berries, what are these used for? Pardon me, I'm a little bit, I guess they aren't used for anything, they're just food. Are they good food? Not really. Neat. I was a little bit hungry anyway. But yeah, the Solignolia will prevent items from being picked up in a 4x4 area. So you can put that next to... Uh, say if I had a open crate, which is like a dispenser but faster, sitting over those endo flames, uh, feeding them coal. Unlike when I drop a piece of coal and it waits a minute and lets flowers pick it up, it wouldn't register that, and everything would just fly towards me on the magnet every time I walk close. But if I plant a Solignolia there, the coal just stays on the ground and the flowers can eat it. You can set it up near important processing that requires things to be thrown on the ground, and your magnet won't disrupt it. It's very, very convenient. Like, later on, when we have Thomcraft golems harvesting our crops, they don't pick it up, they just throw it right on the ground, and a hopper hawk has to pick it up. And we can plant solignolias all around so that we don't have to worry about staying away from the auto farm um, and getting swarmed by thousands and thousands of items if we mistakenly get too close. So, let's take these eight rowan saplings, because I believe the witch's oven still burns at the same rate, and let's just let it eat them. And let's put these woods away. I forget if the wood, well, I know that one of those woods has the use of B 
being used in an altar. But I think for the most part, they pretty much work just like wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're pretty much just regular wood. Yep. Hey, look at that whiff of magic. Okay, let's make those redstone seeds. That's going to require, that's easy, that's easy. Yep. And let's actually put most of these away. You out of my bar. Okay, red dye. I think I might actually have some on hand in here. No, it would be in organics. Take a shot every time I forget about the organics chest. You'll be drunk as hell by the end of this series. Okay. Rune of mana, button. Button, button, who's got the button? More specifically, who has the smooth stone to make a button? Did I spend all my... Sp no, it would just be in here because it's used to make living rock. Okay. Uh, rune of mana for strong essence and a seed. Rune of mana. Okay. Doop, 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 doop. Pick that up. Get out my smashy stick. And that is, of course, going to take a moment. I believe on this tier of elements, I'm going to be able to get my hand... Yeah, this shows all the ones I can make. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I can make Essence of Diamond, and with Diamond I can make Mana Diamond, which is one of the ingredients in Terra Steel, which is what I will need to open the portal to Alfheim. And that will finally allow me to tech up these slow spreaders. So that is getting close to achievable very, very soon. You done yet? Okay. Oosh. I'd better make some more sticks before I head up. <sighs> redstone, redstone, lovely, lovely redstone. Helps me make all the things so very... Ease prone. When in doubt, smash the center. <laughs> okay, let's decide what we want to do next. I could grind out some more mutandus and try and get glintweed and Spanish moss and all that. I could. What's this Polynesia charm? Hmm. 
Hmm. Odor of purity. Oh, that's the Hawthorns. Okay, none of the rest of that is particularly hard, except possibly for the fish. You've probably seen this a couple of times because I keep neglecting it and it's close by, but I have dug out a little fishing pond, which I am also going to put our pearl oysters inside. And actually, I might as well do that right now. Do I have anything in the furnace? I need more iron. I am going to have to make a crepe ton of hoppers. And I will get back to you once that is over. Oh no! Oh no, I'm drowning! But wait! What's that noise? My air! Yes, shitty acting aside, I have made myself a Mariculture diving suit. This suit provides a bunch of little extras. It allows you to walk at full speed underwater. It gives you uh, aqua affinity that lets you mine at full speed. And so long as there's one of these air pumps nearby, and I think it has a range of something like a uh, hundred blocks. It's a pretty huge thing. So long as this air pump is nearby and receiving power, it will refill your air as it runs out. And that makes working underwater quite a lot easier. Now, this is the setup I decided on for our, poor, for our pearl oysters. I have a line of hoppers leading up to a chest over here, which will eventually receive all of their outputs. And I have a hopper on the side, which will feed sand into the oyster. That is how these oysters work. They accept a single piece of sand and very, very, very slowly they convert it into a pearl, which can be used to manufacture various magical items. Now, we have a bit of a difficulty here. If I put this down, and I try and put a hopper on top of it, it will suddenly uproot a bunch of our oysters, because these things are very finicky about their water. When I was, when I was retrieving this earlier, I tried to uproot it using that trick, but it doesn't work from the side. Instead, it only works if the water on top of it is gone, because then it thinks it is dry. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting a chest, I'm putting the hopper on the side of it so it points into the chest, and then I'm putting down the pearl oyster. And this should work perfectly well. That hopper will still be bound into the oyster. Let me just prove myself right, get myself a little bit of sand to test this out. Yeah, you see? In it goes. There it is, sitting in the oyster. It is happy and fine. So, as you can see, this is a bit of a slow and tedious process, especially since the chest ends up back in our output every single time. But that is just how this will happen, and it will be how we eventually automate all of these oysters. So, I will get back to you in a minute when that is done. Okay, we're out of that nasty water and on to bigger and better things. Specifically, that thing is making this thing, the sifter, and I only needed one of that. My apologies, I thought I needed two because you do in fact need the two that it gives you. The sifter is kind of the baseline technology of Mariculture's fishing section. You plunk down two pieces of it next to each other like that, it forms up into a cute little multi-block. And there are various things that you can sift on it. I think most organic things like wheat, I know leaves, and eh, there's some saplings. 
you just take over the things you want to sift, and you right-click them right onto there. And it gives you various types of bait. No, wheat does not work. In that case, by sifting saplings, I got grasshopper bait. Just put all that away. And I believe the quest... Let's see, that was in encoding. Yes. This bait is used with Mariculture fishing rods. And it's asking me to make a reed fishing rod, which is the lowest tech version. I moved all the sugarcane up into the chest. No, I am just straight up out of sugar cane. <laughs> this is why we grow the sugar cane as a utility crop. Just need three of it with, I believe, two strings. And that gives me the reed fishing rod. And is that the only part of the quest? No, it wants us to catch a cod. Specifically, a living female cod. Now, to use a mariculture fishing rod, you just put it next to the bait you want to use on your bar. And it goes just like regular old fishing, except fairly fast. Now, when we cast that line, or when we brought that fish in, it kind of jumped out of the water a little bit, and that killed the fish. Because in Mariculture, you can catch living fish, but you get a greater chance of it, I believe, with higher tech rods, and you get a greater chance of it if you fish underwater. Oops, that ended up in the hopper. Did that end up in the hopper? Where did that fish go? The fish, the fish, the fishy. Ooh, I wonder where the fish has gone. No, well, that was mysterious. What the heck? Yeah, that definitely ended up in the hopper. Did they? Oh, it ended up in the hopper going to the. Yeah. And you see, we, we caught a raw salmon, that is a dead salmon, in other words, any time it says raw, it's dead. And we caught a live damsel fish. Oh, and I guess, I guess it doesn't want us to catch a cod in particular, it just wants us to catch any living fish. So, that completes the first quest on that line. Gives us some geneticist points, which we haven't really acquired much of yet. And I've never really gotten into mariculture fish breeding. I don't think there are any resources in this pack that really need it. I should put a chest nearby here, but oh well. Yeah, there's, there's fish oil, but you can just use dead fish for that. There's a little auto fisher I can make that can catch fish for me. That is just a system that I will probably not play with very much. I do not enjoy fishing. Now... What the Sam hell was I doing? I was making the, the Polynesia charm. For that, I need a cod, and I think it is specifically a cod. But I don't think we have to really worry about catching specifically a cod, because if I remember correct, yeah. Transmutation works for fish, giving you the specific type that you want. You just need to cycle through until you get it. Okay, so Ring of Polynesia. Needs a piece of iron, some odors of purity, and four nether wart. I should have the four wart 
right there. A piece of iron. And that odor of purity is one of the saplings. Hawthorn. Do we have eight Hawthorn to, the, to burn? No, we do not. So I am going to have to cut down some trees. And because there is exciting ent danger, I might as well not go off camera to do this. Oh, why not? Let's do all three. Alder. Rowan. Rogan. No Ents! Time for more exciting Ent Danger! Ent Danger! Back! No! Yeah. Ents are pretty dang tough. But they take extra damage from axes, and I'm not sure if Tinker's axes count. Hmm. It's about the same. Does this work? No. I guess it's only vanilla axes. Anyway. They're tough. They have lots of HP. They knock you back. But they're also really tall, and there's usually a bunch of trees around. So they aren't really a problem to deal with. Ugh, that's a creepy noise. And somehow we got more than one of them. Maybe that's a side effect of the lumber axe. This one is stuck. Good for us. Okay, so let's see here. That's doing 8 damage per hit. This one does... About six damage per hit. And this does. Yeah, just four. Yeah, these aren't getting any sort of weapon bonus on them. Oh well. Ents drop, of course, ent twigs, which are used in a bunch of things. Neat. No more end danger. Once the ends spawn, the chance resets again. So it's kind of a thing of destroying a bunch of trees eventually gets nature angry at you. I heard something. I did hear something. Can I get him before the leaves decay? Yes, I almost definitely can. So yeah, Ent Danger. Not that dangerous. Polynesia Charm. Now, from what I understand, this thing allows you to talk to animals. Neutral or passive animals. And it allows you to trade with them like they were a villager. And they have some weird stuff. Tongue of Dumb. What have you been doing? That's... That, that's not even a big box you're in. How? Cacti, carrots. What are you all up to? Ugh. I'm I'm moderately horrified. Uh, chickens, are you less weird? I think I can just jump out of there. Yeah, because my sojourner sash gives me a jump boost. 
Uh, this tongue of the dog. There's not even any grass for mobs to spawn in here. Mandrake. If neat, it makes a noise. Iron. Oh, well, I needed iron to craft this in the first place, so no, that wouldn't be a path to early iron. Huh. These animals are freaks. I'm glad I put their pens far away from my house. So the next quest on the witchery line is to get the other utility plants from witchery. The Spanish moss. The ember moss. Hello. And the glimmerweed. Now, ember moss and... Er, yeah, ember moss and Spanish moss, we need shears to harvest. And we do only need one of them. Because if we plant this on dirt or grass, it will slowly spread on its own until it reaches a certain density. So... Can we do this? Bald cypress, huh? Okay. Hmm. Come on. I have the worst luck with Mutandus. 